वेलकम टू ई पी जी पाठशाला माई सेल्फ डॉक्टर कुमारी वंदना दिस इज मॉडल नंबर ट्वेंटी वन एंड टॉपिक ऑफ द मॉड्यूल इज कंसेप्ट ऑफ त्रिदोषा इन आयुर्वेदा फर्स्ट वी विल टॉक अबाउट द ऑब्जेक्टिव ऑफ द मॉड्यूल फर्स्टली वी विल स्टार्ट विद द ब्रॉड ऑब्जेक्टिव ऑफ दिस मॉड्यूल विच इंक्लूड्स द इंट्रोडक्शन फिजोलॉजिकल परस्पेक्टिव ऑफ त्रिदोषा third is the divisions of tridosha applied aspects of tridosha and finally the summary first we will start with the introduction ayurveda ayurveda is referred as science of life because the sanskrit meaning of the word ayush is life and the veda is science or knowledge the ayurvedic philosophy which has its roots in the vedas the oldest written literature in the world which tells us how life in in its totality can be understood it is not just a system of medicine in the conventional sense of treating disease but it is a way of life that teaches us how to maintain and protect health it shows us both how to cure diseases and how to promote longevity ayurveda treats man as a whole which is a combination of body mind and soul in contrast to the western medicine which is based more on structures and reduces everything to fundamental unit of matter which is generally referred as reductionist approach the conventional medicine and its research methodologies are largely based on newtonian physics and the classical reductionist world view model where there is no role of consciousness on the other hand ayurveda life sciences is based on the holistic logic where physiology is connected to consciousness and and has its own function oriented approaches like theories of panch mahabhuta tridosha dhatu agni etc which cannot be fully explained in terms of conventional anatomy and physiology the fundamental basis of ayurveda are found in ancient indian treatises on the physical and metaphysical aspects of the universe which are called as darshanas the concept of the different darshanas have been used by the ayurveda to understand the various relationships which governs life or the life processes and also the relations between humans and the cosmos now we are going to talk about the concept of ayurveda and the modern physics in the sequence of gradual modification of fundamental sciences notion in physics and bioscience which is gradually shifting to a quantum logics and nano science presently the modern science has developed unifield theories in quantum physics in contrary in ancient philosophy there is already description of the concept of unifield field of consciousness in indian metaphysics man is a microsome of the universe the macrosome that he inhabits yatha loki tatha pinde that means whatever man is made up of the world too is made of those same things or elements the ayurvedic philosophy postulates that the universe nature and the human body are all comprised of five fundamental elements called the panch mahabhutas that is the space air fire water and earth whose biological applications in human 
is reflected in the form of three doshas. They are the vata, pitta and kapha. In Ayurveda, body, mind and consciousness work together to maintain a balance and are called the tripod of life. To learn how to maintain balance between body, mind and consciousness, it is very important to know how vata, pitta and kapha work together. Presently, quantum physics predicted that real world is non-classical and everything in the universe are interrelated. So, the change in one part will also be will reflected in other parts too. The Vedic concept of Yat Pindetar Brahmande suggests that the harmonious continuum of complex interdependent relationship between living and the non-living forms in the interconnected universe. This concept of interconnected, interdependent and dynamic relationship is consistent with the quantum worldview. Ayurveda, which has its origin from Vedas, has integrated this concept of interrelated interconnectedness in humans into its understanding of health and diseases. It considers human body as an indivisible whole with a network of interrelated functions, mind and consciousness, wherein a disturbance in one part will have disturbance in the other parts as well. Ayurveda considers life as a complex interrelationship of three dosa, it not merely a structure made up of cells or atoms, molecules, which disguises it from biomedicine in dealing with human body in a holistic way. Now proceeding further, we will talk about the physiological perspective of three dosa. Let us start with the central concept of Ayurveda, the doshas. What does dosha mean? The literal meaning of the term dosha is that which can become vitiated. So, dosha refers to all the factors and energies responsible for the physiological functions which are prone to imbalances and vitiate other bodily tissues. However, this definition is not adequate in the, all the context. Dosa is a specific word used in the Ayurvedic test. And uh, when they are in normal state, that is in the quantity, quality and function, they maintain a harmonious psychophysiology and they are called the dhatus. But once they go out of balance, they corrupt or vitiate the dhatus, the bodily tissues in which they reside and then they become the doshas. The terms vata, pitta and kapha in Sanskrit refers to the functions like movement, transformation, cumulation respectively. So the, uh, so the doshas actually represents dynamic principles which are physiochemical and functional in nature which governs all life processes. They are the energy complexes which is known by their attributes or gunas. Vata, Pitta, Kapha are the very foundation principle of Ayurveda. The concept of humors, wind, bile and phlegm found in past Greek medicine can be considered likely an offspring of Ayurveda. The dosas are made up of Panchamahabhus. These five fundamental elements combine with each other in the different proportion to form the Tidosa. However, there is a predominance of one or other elements in each dosa as Vata is primarily 
composed of space and air pitta of fire and water and kapha of water and earth by analyzing the functions of the dosha the three doshas can be collated with the elementary system theory in the field of physics which identifies three main functions for an open system the input or output th- throughput or turnover and the storage in balanced state the nature of doshas is to serve an integrative function and to be materially and energetically supportive of the bio psychosocial well-being of the individual now proceeding further we will talk about the properties of tridoshas any substance exhibit the properties of elements of which it is made up of each doshas has its distinct properties depending upon the predominance of basic elements of which it is composed of the vata dosha has a properties like dry cold light subtle mobile non slimy and rough in properties the pitta dosha is slightly unctuous hot sharp liquid light and pungent smell kapha dosha is heavy cold soft unctuous sweet stable and slimy now the functions of dosha do the three dosha functionally exist at all the levels of biological system but the vata is predominantly found in lower abdomen pitta in the area between the navel and the heart while the kapha resides in the area above the heart now we are going to describe each dosha in detail vata vata is a subtle energy that control forces of movement in the body and mind now the location of vata its major sites are believed to be the colon lower back calf muscles ear bones and joint in normal state vata is responsible for bestowing enthusiasm eagerness desire respiratory movements all activities of the body mind and speech initiation and execution of urges secreto motor functions in the gut regulation of psychological processes regulation of psychological processes initiation of all the activities of sense organs transmission of different sensations and control and coordination of different parts of the body in short what vata controls the respiratory circulatory lymphatic excretory and reproductive systems as well as as well as all types of bodily movements so we can uh, we so we can say that all the functions of central peripheral and autonomic nervous system are represented through vata in ayurveda the imbalance of vata results in abnormal movements suppression of secretions contractions of muscles spasm roughness of the skin astringent taste in the mouth constipation anxiety emaciation of body disturbed sleep abdominal distension abnormal speech and sensory functions now we will discuss about the pitta the location of pitta the major sites of pitta are believed to be the stomach duodenum liver spleen pancreas heart eyes and skin in the normal state pitta is responsible for digestion maintenance of body temperature appetite production of hunger thirst complexion courage valor and softness in the body it controls the forces of transformation 
and primarily responsible for metabolism including the cellular and the subcellular metabolism digestion thermoregulation energy hemostasis pigmentation vision understanding and intelligence as a pitta performs the activities like digestion metabolism production of heat so it is also called as agni that is meaning fire imbalanced state of pitta results in yellowish discoloration of eyes urine feces and skin it also causes excessive hunger thirst sweat burning sensation redness etc now the kapha the location of kapha kapha is situated in the chest stomach brain tongue and synovial membrane of the bone joints in normal state kapha controls the anabolic forces and is responsible for growth and maintenance of structures storage and stability it provides cohesion that holds the cells together kapha provides stability lubrication compactness to joints moisturizes moisturizes skin maintains immunity forbearness that is a capacity to withstand or withhold emotion stress etc and expressed as calmness and forgiveness and this imbalance of kapha can result in weak digestive power excessive salivation feeling of heaviness coldness white discoloration dyspnea cough itching reduced activity of limbs swelling etc now we will talk about the divisions of dosa there are three dosas and each of them has been divided into five subtypes each subsystem has a leader as pranvar controls other vatas pachak pitta controls other pittas and the avlambak kaf controls other kafas first we will talk about the subdivisions of vata the five types of vata and their functions are as follows pran vata it is situated in head and is responsible for controlling intellectual functions cardiovascular functions sense organs psychological activities respiration and reflex activities like sneezing belching degradation etc second is the udan vata its active site is in chest region and it is primarily response and it is primarily responsible for production of speech the effort and strength required for speech production are also the function of udana it also helps in recalling the vocabulary required for well articulated speech now the vyan vata the active site of vyan vata is heard movements like contraction and relaxation of muscle eye movement yawning blood circulation limb circulations movement all over the body and it's moves all over the body and provide nourishment to all the tissues so sympathetic and parasympathetic control of the functions of heart may be indicated by the vyan vata now the sam- saman vata the uh, active site of saman vata is adjacent to the gastrointestinal tract it performs the functions like receiving food as digestion through the activation of agni separations of nutrient and wastes and its onward propulsion the described functions are either those of parasympathetic nervous systems supplying the gut or those of the enteric nervous system now the apana vata its active site is the pelvic region apana controls excretory processes like micturition defecation menstruation ejaculation and its aid in the expulsion of fetuses the autonomic nervous system might be considered to have role 
in most of these activities the uh, description of the five vatas has been presented first is the pran vata it maintains intellect sense organs heart mind breathing expectorations it controls the action of other vatas second is the udan vata it controls activities strength discriminations it nourishes bodily tissues it is responsible for consciousness third is the vyan vata movements like contraction and relaxation of muscles upward and downward movement of eyelids yawning are are, are the functions of vyan vata it is also responsible for blood circulation limb circulation nourishment to all tissues and it is the vata that pervades entire body the saman vata it is responsible for movement in the digestive system retaining food in the elementary tract separations of essence and waste are also the function of saman vata it is also responsible for the downward movement of waste ets now the apan vat it is responsible for elimination of feces urine semen menstrual fluid fetuses now we will talk about the subdivisions of pitta and their functions first is the pachak pitta it controls the digestion and assimilation of food it is responsible for separation of nutrients from waste ets now second is the ranjak pitta it is responsible for red color to the ras and it is associated for with the uh, and, um, second is the ranjak pitta and it is responsible for red color to the rasa it is associated with the blood third is the sadak pitta and it is associated with discrimination intelligence pride enthusiasm the alochak pitta helps in the vision and the last pitta is the bhajak pitta it is associated with skin complexion and it is it is helpful in digestion the third we are going to describe about the subdivisions of kafas and the functions first is the avlambak kafa it is associated with heart and the fluid in the chest shoulder arm and neck are the functions of kafa it supports um nephr now we are going to describe about the different types of kafas and their functions first is the avlambak kafas it is responsible first is the avlambak kafa it is associated with heart the fluid in the chest shoulder arm and neck are because of the avlambak kafa this kafa supports other kafas also second is the kleda kafa it controls the lubrication of food in the digestive process third is the bodha kafa it controls the saliva and other juices that moisten the mouth the taste perception is also because of the bodha kafa third is the tarpak kafa it is associated with fluids in the head and it is responsible for nourishment of the senses the last is the slesa kafa and it is responsible for lubrication of joints in the body now uh, we are going to describe about the five types of pittas and their functions which are as follows the first is the pachak pitta the function of pachak pitta is equivalent to the jitragni that is a metabolic fire its function suggests that the enzymes responsible for digestion along with all the gastrointestinal hormones and the all local hormones of the git can be included in it there is a second is the ranjak pitta 
Its major sites is believed to be stomach, liver, and spleen. And it is responsible for synthesis of rakta that is blood. The Brajapitta. It is believed to be situated in the skin. As we know, the pigmentation of skin is under the control of the hormones like ACTH and MSH from the anterior pituitary and some local enzymes in the skin. It is responsible for the metabolism of certain drugs applied topically. So, Brajak Pitta can be considered to include these enzymes along with the hormones controlling pigmentation. The Sadak Pitta It is believed to be located in the herd, but all the functions ascribed to this Pitta are of cerebrum, limbic system, hypothalamus, and other structure of CNS. The Alochak Pitta its major site is to be believed its major site is believed to be the eyes and it is responsible for normal vision. The photosensitive chemicals in the eyes called the photopigments and the whole process involved in photochemistry of vision along with the neurotransmitter involved in the visual pathway can be represented by the alochak pitta. Now we are going to uh, just uh, understand the five types of uh, kaphas. First is the avalambak kapha. It is situated in the thorax and it protects the thoracic region and other vital structures like heart, through which it is called ambu karma, referring to the humidification. Other anatomical sites where other types of kapha are situated also are dependent on this. The ambu karma can be referred as a lymphatic drainage. Now the kledak kapha. It is represented in the stomach and moistens the ingested food. The mucus secreted in the stomach provides protection to mucus membrane of the stomach along with the providing liquid medium for digestive process. The gut associated lymphoid tissues also plays important role in protection by preventing the entry of microbes through the gut. Acid secreted in stomach also provides innate immunity to some extent. All these functions can be applied under the Kledak Kapha. Now there is the Bodhak Kapha. This is said to be present in oral cavity and it helps in the perception of taste. So the salivary juice secreted in the oral cavity not only helps in the process of taste perception but it also performs some protective functions and these can be included in the with a kapha. The tarpa kapha. It is situated in the head and is responsible for protection and nourishment of the sensory and motor organs. The microglia and other similar glial cells of the brain tissues may be considered to represent tarpa kapha. Now is the slesa kapha. This kapha is present in the bony joints and is responsible for lubrication and easy movements of the joints. But the slesa kapha is not only the synovial fluid, which reduces the, the friction between the articular surface of the joint. As we see in the most of the systemic autoimmune diseases like uh, uh, rheumatoid arthritis, uh, systemic sclerosis, systemic lupus, erythromatosis, etc. The joints are the prominent sites of inflammation. Such involvement must be there, therefore ascribed to the problems of slesa kapha. The functions of the immune system and all other such protective mechanism in the body is controlled by the kapha in Ayurveda. Now we will 
discuss about the applied aspect of the three doshas. The functional aspect of vata, pitta and kapha exists at all levels of biological organization. For example, the movement exists at the level of cell as, as the cell motility, membrane transverse and at the level of organ that is uh, or respiration and it uh, movements at the entire system level that is the running and also in the mind the movements of the thoughts. Human system is a complex network of three doshas. Now we will see the relationship of dosa and the environment. The individual is interconnected with the environment and the change in the external environment can also influence the internal environment of the body. Dosas increase or decrease naturally during the course of a day, different seasons, example the diurnal cycle, the seasonal rhythm, etc. This concept have been practically applied in Ayurvedic concepts such as the Dincharya and the Ritu Charya, the Delhi and the seasonal resumes and in, and in its understanding of causative factors during epidemics. Now uh, we will discuss about the daily variations of dosas. The three dosas have the tendency to increase and decrease during the different phase of day and night. The whole 24 hours can be divided into two segments day and night and the variation in the level of dosa can be seen. During day, day time in the forenoon, the that is Purvahan, in the last phase of night, there is predominance of Vata. In the noon time, that is the Madhyan and the midnight, there is a predominance of Pitta. In morning and the first phase of night, there is predominance of Kapha. kapha. In morning and the first phase of night, there is predominance of Kapha. They maintain our biological clock or the circadian, circadian, circadian. They maintain our biological or circadian rhythm. Taking this rhythm into consideration, a healthy daily regimen, Dincharya has been described in Ayurveda. Uh, now, in the present table, the predominance of different dosa in different time of the day has been described. In the uh, daytime, the vata is predominant at the end of the day, it is around 2 pm and the 6 pm. While in the midday, it is uh, 10 am to 2 pm, the pitta is predominant. While the kapha is in predominant in the first phase of the day, it is 6 am to 10 am. During the night uh, time, uh, vata is predominant. Vata is predominant in the end of the night. That is the so 2 a.m. See 2 a.m. to 6 a.m. Well, the pitta is is predominant in the midnight. That is from 10 p.m. to 2 a.m. And uh, kapha is uh, more predominant at the first phase of night. That is the 6 p.m. to 10 a.m. Now we will discuss about the tridosa and the seasons. Now we will talk about the three, dos three dosas and the seasons. As the human body is a part of this ecosystem, it is influenced by the changes in the environment with the seasons. Depending upon the attributes of the different seasons, the dosas also undergoes variations. In Ayurveda, six seasons have been described. Due to the environmental effects, Dosas accumulates, aggravates and become normal in different seasons. Like uh, Vata gets accumulated in early summer, it gets aggravated in the late summer, that is the rainy season and it's calmed down in the autumn. Likewise, the Pitta accumulates in the late summer, that is rainy season aggravates in the autumn, the Sarad Ritu and the calms down in the early winter. On the contrary, the Kapha accumulates in, accumulates in the late winter, gets aggravated in the spring, that is Vasant Ritu and calms down in the summer. For the maintaining of the equilibrium of the dosa, the best time to eliminate the aggravated dosa is during the season it gets into aggravated phase.
so the vata pitta and kapha should be eliminated during the rainy autumn and the spring season respectively by this process the conservation of the dosa is maintained the changes in the dosa affect individuals according to the each one each one uh, body each nahi fir se kare thoda sa hmm bas the changes in the dosas affect individuals according to each one's body con- constitution so in ayurveda various rules and regimens charyas regarding the diet and behavior have been depicted to acclimatize with the seasonal variation easily without altering body homeostasis now we should describe we should um, now we, should, we are going to talk about the relationship between the tridosha and the diet as per the ayurveda there are six types of rasas or tastes named named as the madura the sweet amla is sour lavan is salt katu is pungent tikta is bitter and kashaya is astringent a balanced diet must include all the six rasas in a good balance rasa are the only composed of rasas are also composed of five basic elements that is the panch mahabhutas excessive intake of food having particular taste lead to aggravation of the doshas and if any dosh get vitiated use of specific rasa can be useful in bringing back its to its normal state the relationship between the rasas and the doshas have been described here in this table in the table it is described that uh, the sweet rasa it is predominantly composed of earth and the water element and uh, it aggravates the kapha dosh mm, it aggravates the kapha dosh and the dosha decreased by intake of this uh, sweet taste is pitta and vata the sour taste it is predominantly composed of the fire and the earth element and the dosha increased by it is the kapha and pitta and what the get decreased by intake of sour taste the sour salt taste uh, it is mainly com- uh, composed of the water and the fire element and the wa- kapha and pitta get de- increased by excess intake of the salt rasa and the vata get decreased the bitter rasa is predominantly composed of the air and the space element and the vata dosh in get increased by excess intake of this bitter rasas and the pitta and the kapha get decreased by its intake the pungent rasa is predominantly composed of the air and the fire element and the vata and pitta as increased by excess intake of pungent taste while the kapha gets decreased astringent taste is predominantly composed of air and the uh, earth element and the kapha and the vata doshas gets aggravated by excess intake of the astringent taste while the uh, pitta gas gets decreased by uh, its intake now we will talk about the role of tridosha in health and disease health is the state of equilibrium of doshas which is indicated by the balanced interrelationship between the various functions and parameters when the original balance of the dosha is disturbed or when they are aggravated by internal or external factors there is an alteration in their expression either qualitatively quantitatively or functionally which leads to their disequilibrium for the individual disequilibrium in the dosha is a starting point for symptomatic expression and the initiation of disease the basis of diagnosis of a disease is a dosha and the classification of disease is mainly based on it all the clinical symptoms can be classified and interpreted in the relationship of dosha sorry <clears throat> Excellent. Let's go. 
all the <clears throat> all clinical symptoms can be classified and interpreted in relation of three doshas for example the cough if a cough is dry the vata involvement is considered and if it is protective then kapha is said to be vitiated no clinical sign or symptom or any disorder lie outside the purview of this classification now we should discuss now we are going to discuss about the role of tridosha in therapeutic management the ayurveda primary aims at the treating the cause of the disease and not just the symptom by identifying the imbalances of the tridoshas which is the main cause of any disease the line of treatment of disorders in ayurveda is to bring back the equilibrium of dosha to achieve the balance of the dosha ayurvedic medicines diet activity that is mental and the physical are used the specific specific treatment modalities are used depending upon the dosha involved in the pathogenesis of the diseases or undergone imbalances now we are going to summarize the whole module ayurveda the ancient indian holistic medical science which deals with body mind and spirit and its aims at preservation of health and prevention cure of diseases tridosha theory is the most fundamental concept in ayurveda and the life is considered as a complex interrelationship of three doshas the doshas actually represent energy complexes which are physiochemical and functional in nature and it governs all life processes the three dosha the vat pitta kapha signifies the functions as movement transformation and storage respectively the knowledge of three dosha is important in understanding the life processes attaining healthy state diagnosis and therapeutic management of diseases it also performs the basis of personalized medicine which distinguishes ayurveda from the conventional medicine thank you